This is the best show. I never miss it. You can't. You're in it. I know. And you know what I love best about this show? No, what's that? Me! <laughs> Roll it. Roll it. If you're making a list of the most successful kids shows of all time, Bobby's World has to be on there. It premiered in 1990 and ran almost for a whole decade, ending in 1998. That's seven seasons, 81 episodes, and roughly 1,800 minutes of content, which I calculated all by myself with no help whatsoever. Siri, how do I add time? Sorry, I don't understand what you mean. Am I recording? That number might be just a little off. But that's a lot of episodes, way more than a lot of other popular cartoons. Whoa! For instance, Bobby's World ran for more seasons in 80s hits DuckTales and Inspector Gadget combined. It was a big hit for Fox Kids. Bobby can do anything! Watch Bobby's World! And here's the funny part. Two of its co-creators were Jim Fisher and Jim Stahl, the guys who would later bring us one of the goofiest shows probably ever. But here's why it was so successful. It wasn't about some high concept like mutant turtles or a superhero talking duck. Come on, Launchpad, let's get dangerous. It was about a normal little kid and how he blows little things way out of proportion. I mean, really little things. You don't want to eat food that's gone bad. Food that's gone bad? For me, Limburger, you stink. It was a show about nothing, really. In fact, it was a lot like another popular show about nothing that premiered just one year prior and ended the exact same year. That's right, Bobby's World is so good because it's the Seinfeld of kids' TV. And I'll explain how and everything you didn't know about Bobby's World. But first, we have to acknowledge the other reason why Bobby's World was so great. It's opening theme, which was co-composed by John Tesh, the creator of the greatest and catchiest song ever. Yo, that is legendary. Whether you were a huge Hoop fan or not, you have to remember that. I'm gonna tell you right now, we will be going back to that clip again later because it's so good. Great! Now, a popular 90s TV trend was to give sitcoms to up and coming stand up comedians, and it totally worked. There was Seinfeld. And what's the deal with lampshades? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's a lamp, why do you want shade? <laughs> Home Improvement. Uh? Uh? Everybody Loves Raymond, and a lot more. Boss. <laughs> Kids TV tried the same thing. Remember Life with Louie? Roller coaster ride, roller coaster Catchy song. Almost as catchy as Tesh's opening for Bobby's World. But still not as catchy as this. Sorry, can't help myself. Also, remember the Ace Ventura animated show, which was basically a way to make a show about Jim Carrey without actually having to pay him? Ace Ventura! Oh, righty then. Yeah, they'd go on to do that a couple more times in 1995 with The Mask and Dumb and Dumber. But none of them were as successful as Bobby's World. Bobby's World was the longest running Fox Kids animated series ever and the longest running Fox Kids series in general until Power Rangers dethroned it in 2001. And it's all thanks to stand-up comic Howie Mandel, who created the show along with Fisher and Stahl. He also voiced Bobby, which means he just complimented himself here. We packed up your suitcase for you! <laughs> Any cute. Mandel also played Bobby's dad Howie, who gives himself a nice little shout out when his special premiered. Here's something that we can all watch. The Howie Mandel Comedy Special, huh? <laughs> I think this is a nice look. Now, the only thing about this logic that threw me off is that Bobby knows the live action Howie is also the animated Howie. That's some um, pretty early fourth wall breaking. 
Look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real person standing in a cartoon room. That is funny. Well, wait a second. Before Deal or No Deal, Mandela was a successful stand-up comic with a lot more hair. Oh, also, apparently his evil clone took over the last season of the show, which you can see here in all black with the goatee and acting kind of rude to Bobby. No, please, Bobby, don't act like a silly kid. It's too late, Holly. Alright, maybe it's not his evil clone. Start the show. Mandel's stand-up act was very popular in the 80s, just like Jerry Seinfeld. But his comedy was the total opposite of Jerry's, which you can tell by the gold jacket and giant prop glove. His act was more like Carrot Top meets Bobcat Goldwing. He also did a bunch of wacky characters and voices that got him a lot of kids' comedy work. He also did Gizmo in the Gremlins movie. Me, what's his name? His name's Gizmo. Giz? He's a Mogwai. But one of his more popular stand-up characters was Bobby, and audiences went wild for it. So wild, he couldn't even get through his act. My name is Bobby. No one's crazy. He came up with that voice when he was choking on a piece of cake. True story. Oh, please don't, please don't laugh. Now do you see how the show was based on his stand-up act? Sound familiar? So they're showing me on television the detergents for getting out blood stains. Is this a violent image to anybody? Blood stains? I mean, I mean come on, you got a t-shirt with blood stains all over it. Maybe laundry isn't your biggest problem right now. And that's where Mandel's act was much more like Jerry's. The Bobby character was a grounded, childlike interpretation of observational humor, which everyone was doing back then. Even me. And what's the deal with cotton candy? Who wants candy that tastes like cotton? Come on! Wow, I was... good. Now, not only were the main characters alike, but so were the shows. First, they both had live action segments that opened the episodes where Howie does some of his comedy bits and whatever is going on here. <laughs> but also, like the Seinfeld intros, the live action bits would often set up a premise that the episode would later explore, like spring cleaning. It's just me, reading my lips, I'm, I'm just getting ready to do spring cleaning. There's an alien in the garage! Nah, that would be John Tesh. A group of protesters outside a John Tesh concert in Detroit, Michigan, carrying signs claiming that John Tesh was actually a space alien. I believe it. Also, Howie and Jerry dress very alike, which is to say, super 90s. Big white shoes, shirt tucked into jeans, leather jacket, semi mullet, it's all there. For the record, though, I give Jerry the edge on the kicks, because he used to rock some heat on that show. Not only was Howie a lot like Jerry, but the rest of the cast of Bobby's World maps onto the cast of Seinfeld pretty well. There's the main character, Bobby, who's just a normal kid with a big imagination. He also makes a lot of everyday observations that make a lot of sense, just like Jerry. The family meeting was at home. I don't know why parents don't call family meetings at Fun and Pizza. More people would want to be there. Good point, Bobby. And he was full of good points, which he shared by breaking the fourth wall and addressing the audience directly. What are you stooges doing in here? Making a mess? You can tell that Natalie is almost an adult. She's asking stupid questions that she already knows the answer to. Oh, and also, just like Jerry, he loves cereal and superheroes. I'm Captain Squash! Actually, add me to that list. He idolizes me. It's embarrassing. And while Jerry frequently referenced Superman, Bobby would always talk about Captain Squash. Don't listen to him, Bobby. Do the right thing. Then there's the wacky weirdo Uncle Ted, who pops in like Kramer. They also both wear ridiculous shirts and fall down a lot. Also, we all can relate. We all have that crazy uncle, am I right? <laughs> Leftover tuna peanut butter loaf. Oh, my favorite. Uncle Ted also had a bunch of ridiculous friends like Kramer's buddy, Bob Sacamano. My friend, Bob Sacamano. Here, his silly buddies were Meeker and Snurd. I'm not Meeker here. I'm not. See, it says on my tag. Oh, and Meeker was played by Pat Fraley, the voice of Max Ray from The Centurions. I've never seen a cryogenics ray that powerful. And Uncle Ted was based on a real person, just like how Kramer was based on Larry David's real life neighbor, Kenny Kramer. Uncle Ted's real life counterpart was actually John Candy. <laughs> I'm just playing. Though he looked a lot like him actually. Uncle Ted was based on an actor from Jim Fisher and Jim Stahl's comedy troupe from Second City. The actor, Tino Insano, went on to win the part of Uncle Ted and got to play himself. 
unlike Kramer. I get to play Kramer. You can't play Kramer. I am Kramer. And while Jerry had his sarcastic homegirl, Elaine, Bobby had his sarcastic older sister, Kelly, except she had a thick, thick Valley Girl accent. Ew, Uncle Ted is gonna stay with us? Which was a very, very popular trope in the 90s for women. Ugh, as if. Not to mention, both shows have characters named George, except this one was voiced by Pauly Shore and his very identifiable laugh. <laughs> and they both have bitter rivals. Jerry had Newman. Hello, Newman. And Bobby had his older brother, Derek. Get in here, wiener brain! It's all your fault! Then there was Bobby's mom. What in the blazes that Sam Houston is going on in here, for the cry eye? Who was just as overprotective as Jerry's. More did you hear this? Some crazy guy is after Jerry. Also, she sounds a lot like Sarah Palin, apparently. OMG. Oh my God, I keep thinking of one person whenever I hear Sarah Palin speak, the mom from the cartoon Bobby's World. There's been a lot of interest in what I read lately. I don't think this is such a Jim Dandy idea. I that's spot on. Did Sarah Palin actually do her voice? We'll tell you a bit later. Put a sock in it, stop it out already. The only character who didn't really fit in with the whole Seinfeld comparison was her pet dog, Roger. <laughs> Wait. Now that I think of it, Jerry did have a shaggy haired companion. Jerry! Uncle Leo! Hello! Now, beyond characters, the show's premises were also strikingly similar, since both were centered around trivial, seemingly boring everyday occurrences, like how Bobby has a whole episode about fixing a garbage disposal. Oh, don't tell me the garbage disposal is broken again! Honey, the garbage disposal's broken again. Dad, she said don't tell her that. Or losing one of his mom's slippers. Oh. I can think about is that I've lost one of my fuzzy slippers. <laughs> that would have got my ass whipped. In fact, many of the stories used for Bobby's World were taken right out of the writer's own lives. As Mandel stated, I just wrote things that happened to me and my kids, and it was all real, and it happened to work. That sounds a lot like the writing process for Seinfeld. What made a successful episode was um, how funny the idea was. <laughs> it's just these things from your life that were just so funny that you can get, you could see three scenes in it right away. And that's why they share some plot points too, like how Seinfeld and Bobby both have an episode about getting tonsils removed, except Bobby's version is always a lot sillier. You wanna take my tonsils out? My darling tonsil. He also gets lost at the mall like Jerry and the gang. Oh boys, I came in here for many years ago. And then there are some fun random connections too. Like how Bobby's World writer Peter Tilden went on to co-create the show Bob Patterson starring Jason Alexander who played George. No matter what anybody is in this great country of ours, Cal, they have the constitutional right to be that. Not that, George. Which reminds me, both shows had fantastic casts. Aside from Howie Mandel and Pauly Shore, Bobby's World featured Gary Owens as Captain Squash. Right on, Bobby! Who you might remember as Space Ghost. It's beautiful! Beautiful and suspicious. We'll land for a closer look. Edie McClurg played Aunt Ruth, who you for sure remember from lots of 80s films and as a secretary in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. You know who else she thinks is a righteous dude? Bobby. And I can tell by this hug slash body slam. I could just squeeze the stuffing right out of you. <laughs> I don't know which is worse, the aunt body slam or the aunt pinching the cheeks. You tell me. <laughs> what was that for? That was for all the times you're gonna do it to me. Pamela Adlin, who starred in Lucky Louie and Better Things, voiced older brother Derek only after the kid who originally voiced Derek went through puberty. So she replaced him starting in the sixth season. It's mine! It's mine! You said it was mine, dweeb! Derek's lines mostly consisted of calling Bobby a dork or dweeb, or if he's really creative, these are my special caps. I don't want your tweed cooties on them. SNL alum Gail Matthews played the mom, Martha, who was really the emotional core of the show. Mom, look! I got a gold star. Well, for cheapers creepers, aren't you just my special boy there now? It's, it's 
That's adorable. After a hard day at school, nothing feels better than a mom hug. While Bobby's world excelled by channeling the grounded observational style of Seinfeld, there were also some important differences that helped it stand out. For one, they got Fabio for the shortest cameo ever. Hey, thank you for having me on the show. I can't wait to see it. But it's already over. And I bet you my man got pissy. Okay, bye. Another important difference between the shows, Bobby can talk to inanimate objects with lofty career goals. I'm gonna go to college on the GI Bill. I think I'll study interior design. But that's what took this show to another level. Just like Seinfeld, the shows would start off investigating small problems and blow up from there. Except Bobby's episodes became much more fantastical and stylized. He would fight dragons, have underwater musicals. Fish don't stay, underwater the fish don't stay. And appear on his very own game shows. The category is what time should you go to bed? Who do you want to start with? Uncle Ted to block! That's because Bobby would retreat to his imagination, often in a place called Bobby Land where he could cope with his external issues in his own unique way. Like how he reimagines a boring trip to the hardware store as something a lot more fun. It's the Disneyland of hardware stores. Disneyland? Or what he imagines his life would be like after he makes a connection with his older brother, Derek. It also gave them room to travel to new environments like outer space. <laughs> the Wild West. Guess again, you bushwhacking varmints. You're all washed up. Or even the past, like when Bobby visits his dad as a kid who sounds exactly the same. Oh, there you are, son. Dad? You're. You're a kid! My wish came true. Later on, the show would turn a lot of his fantastical interpretations into fun parodies of popular movies, like when Bobby reimagines a visit to the retirement home. <laughs> or when Bobby gets scared to be watched by his babysitter and they do a parody of slasher films that's actually pretty creepy. <laughs> Which reminds me of one of my old Jerry Seinfeld bits. And what's the deal with Freddy Krueger? Five movies, one shirt. I'll tell you the real nightmare on the street to smell that shirt. Huh? I quit. I give up. I suck. But my favorite episodes were the really unexpected ones, like when they did an entire musical episode. I was at the bottom of the pool. I don't recall how long I guess it must have been a while Cause I had time to write the song Hold up, bottom of the pool? I think Bobby died. That's pretty dark. He was at the bottom of the pool The show was funny but also therapeutic for kids, allowing them to use their imagination to overcome their fears and cope with the anxieties of growing up. They tackled everything from an honest kid's perception, like misunderstanding common phrases in a childlike way. Where can I have some new people in the neighborhood? New people? Where do they come from? Now, there will be new and improved Bobby's thanks to me! And yes, that's Gilbert Gottfried. When the tourist bureau advertises Canada, they usually go, Come to Canada, you probably don't know anyone here. One of the biggest differences between Bobby and most other kids shows is that the characters grew and evolved. Like primetime shows, the characters aged and changed in significant ways. Like when Bobby's mom gets pregnant and almost eats the grossest pizza I ever seen. Garlic tuna and pepperoni pizza. <laughs> but the show actually followed through with the subplot, giving Bobby two younger twin brothers, Jake and Al, in season three. Where are those two little generic twins cute? <laughs> That's generic. They're my baby brothers. The passage of time is important in Bobby's world. Bobby celebrates his fifth birthday, moves on from pre-K to elementary school, and even deals with death. I wish I knew how to say this. Over the weekend, Abe passed away. Oh, then when will he be back? Abe's not coming back, Bobby. But that's what made this show so singular. It sent Bobby to the past, the future, outer space, and into movie parodies, but it was also very, very real. Like when Bobby's dad loses his job. I've been laid off. 
Wait up? Dad, Dad, what's laid up? Or when the family has to move. I'm just a kid. I like my friends. I don't want to leave my friends. And the one when he experiences a bunch of firsts throughout the course of the show, like losing his first baby tooth. Oh, and when he gets his first kiss. We all remember that. Most other kids shows just reset the status quo at the end of the episode, but Bobby's world grew up along with its viewers. It's dealing with stuff we all went through in an exaggerated way, just like Seinfeld, and that's why they both hold up so well today, they're timeless. Which explains why Howie Mandel has been trying to revive the show. That would be dope. I know I'd love to hear that theme song on TV again. Adam, roll it. I did that on purpose. So good, come on. Tell me what you think. Is John Tesh an alien? Why or why not? Let us know in the comments. It is the end of the show. No, it's not. Well, Mr. Smarty Pants, when's the show gonna end? Well, that's hard to say. You see that? Now. Thanks for watching. For more EYDK, make sure you click over there. And for new episodes that drop every other week, over there. You heard snacks, didn't you, dog? That's why you're here.